Hi guys, Matt here from Shep's Aquatics. So I do have a bit of an exciting video to show you guys. Um, I'm going to be looking at the new babies I have in my fish room. And let's get into it. So we'll try and do this in one take, but we'll take it from this end. So here we have all my crebensis fry at the moment. I did have them inside, but now I have them out here. Um, they're all about sort of five to six millimeters long, so about a quarter of an inch long. There is a couple that may be a little bit bigger than that. But at the moment, they are all going great. They're feeding really nice. I'm feeding them on baby brine shrimp as well as micro worms and Hakari first bite. So they are getting a very good mixed diet. Now, in this tank, which is my bonsai tank, which also happens to be at the present moment a bit of a holding tank for a lot of fish, we have my um, Epistogramma cacatoides or cacatoises or whatever it is. So we have him sitting there and her sitting right there. Now, unfortunately where she's sitting, I can't really get a really good look at it, but behind that lovely Anubius Nana and on the back of the... Um, Sorry, and on the back of the back of that um, lovely bit of slate there, we do have a pistogram of eggs. So she's actually laid on the back of the slate underneath the leaves of the Java fern, which is great. And as I'm sitting here looking, I am also looking at these little dots here on the edge of the leaves. So there's a couple there, and there is a couple here in the middle. Um going to assume because I'm not a hundred percent sure but they weren't there yesterday <laughs> so I'm not sure if it's a bit of um a fungal a fungal bloom or it could be eggs from these guys um what are they the bivalitania killifish um they've actually been showing some some breeding Breeding activity, so there's three males in here and two females. Then we're showing a bit of a breeding activity, so I can only assume that those are eggs from them guy from those guys, which I don't think will survive in this tank unfortunately. So I have been watching her really really closely. So when she brings out the fry, I'm gonna try and take the fry off. Moving along in the fish fish room, we have my endless. Um, these, these are the Silverado Endlers. As you can see, um, we've got, um, I've actually got to take a, a male out. Um, that's, a, that's a ringing male. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be a female, but he's grew, grew up to be a male. Um, the few females, that, I've got three females in here now. Now I just know that he's a male. Um, three females in here and they're pregnant, so I'm hoping they're pregnant with the Silverados. They are neon blue and the females. Um, but I got them out before they had a chance to breed. So I've been growing them up in here. And now I've noticed that we've got a male, I have to take him out. But next door to that tank, we have moved the, the neon blues and we have a massive clump of Java moss. <laughs> um, but around that Java moss, we have a heap of baby endless. So the endlers are going absolutely nuts. We do have the um, platies which are like endlers and constantly breeding so the males are chasing the females there so hopefully we have some breeding activity with them soon and we get another couple of tanks set up so the platies will eventually go into that M2 foot tank for breeding. Down here we have the Crebensis pair. So I think I just seen the female duck in behind, behind here. But earlier today I did see them, both male and female, hanging out in this nice little cave we've got made, just by drilling a hole in a cherry cotter pot. Um, so I did see them hanging out in there. So I can only. I only hope that there is more babies on the way 
if they do bring out babies again, which they should do, you know, I know that they're a, a pair, they're going to stay in there with the babies until the babies are big, big enough to grow up. Last but not least here in the fish room, we have my Bolivian rams and we have all their babies. So these guys actually did lay eggs in the in the community tank inside, the four foot community tank, the 180 litre litre tank. Um, I did suck these guys out as wrigglers and took the parents at the same time. I introduced the babies into this tank first, then introduced the parents. And lucky enough, the parents actually went around and um, sucked up all the babies and deposited, deposited them in a big clump and continued to raise them. So I got extremely lucky there. So these guys are about five days old. The Grabenses are about seven days old. And everything is going absolutely great. So both the Grabenses and these guys I only had for two weeks before they bred. So I'm extremely, extremely happy with that. And was extremely lucky to manage to actually um, buy a bonded pair of Bolivian rams straight up. So, as you can see, in my fish room, I'm getting babies and more babies, which means I need to buy more tanks to grow out these guys. So, if you didn't actually already notice, but I have started to build the second, the second rack. That is only two tiers high at the moment. Um, there is room if you move that tank out. I've left that little uh, two and a half gallon tank. I have left room to put another three basset blocks on and make the stand a three tier. That six foot tank won't be a three tier, it'll only be a two tier. But there is room to put another three tier down this back side um, when I get the wall on, or when I get a chance to make the wall. So at this stage I haven't insulated the walls I have left enough room between the stands and the wall to um, put insulation up and also put in um, just sliding boards. That will be done before I go three tiers high um, because at the moment I can still work around where it is and everything else. But to, before I do that I'll have to rerun all the wiring and do all that properly. But that's just, that's just where I'm up to with my um, reading projects at the moment. Um, I suppose the other thing that's coming along is if I can find one, but I really highly doubt it. In this six foot, we do have the long arm shrimp as well, and there's one sitting up under there. I have two females that are buried, so. I don't know if the babies will actually survive in this tank because of those um, of those barbs, but um, I am waiting for the temperature to get a little bit higher and um, like temperature outside to get a little bit higher, and I might end up shipping them off to a lucky viewer in the future. Being on some. Some rosa barbs, um, they are fully grown. Oh, there's two juveniles, but there's five fully grown. And they are breeding because the juveniles are bred from this, from the five originals. So we have three males and two females in the originals. Um, I, I have been told that the, the redder colored ones might even be, um, what do they call it, a neon? A neon rosa barb. I don't know why, but I've been told the red ones could be the neon rosa barbs. But who knows? Um, other than that, I think that's just about all the babies. Like I was just saying, I'm pretty sure that's all the babies I have at the moment. Oh, actually, I have one more. <laughs> so, in my arc, I actually do have, and I'm, oh, I won't be able to find them because they're pretty small and they're hiding at the back somewhere. I actually do have two baby CPDs, um, tank bred CPDs. So they were actually the first ones of the babies that I started noticing, but since then it has been 
baby central here and unfortunately I don't have enough tanks for these babies so a lot of the babies will be raised in the tanks that they're in um, the epistogrammers will probably have to come out um, so as soon as the babies hatch there I'm gonna suck them up and I'm going to and I've emptied out the where are we I've emptied out the waterfall tank and put it into the five gallon with no fish at the moment we're gonna get that other Kmart tank we're gonna get that set up the same as I have with the cribs with a few plants bare bottom and raise the epistogramma fry separately um, until we get a, a proper tank for the epistogrammas so I'm just glad everything's happy at the moment as you might have seen I do have some gold rams that's one of the next ones I do want to breed I do have male and female on the gold rams um, I do want to try and breed those guys but I know I need to up the temperature in that at the moment they're happy living at a lower temperature but I need to up the temperature to get them to breed so they're gonna need their own tank so at the moment everything needs their own tank I don't have enough tanks um, I am planning to buy buy tanks in the near future but that's what we're up to so I hope you guys like the video remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already um, I do try and do a lot more video I'm gonna try and do a lot more videos like this and I'm gonna to start to try and get into some into a few more care guides and stuff like that on some of the fish that I'm keeping um, just so you guys can can keep fish along with me um, when I get the room up and functional more properly I might even start selling some of my fish to you guys um, let me know if that's something you guys want um, I'll look into to shipping to shipping fish um, I've already talked to the guys at Toll and TNT they have a depot basically right next door to my house which is great so that means I can actually get up in the morning go drop off the fish to be shipped out that morning which is absolutely amazing um, it just means I have to get up a little bit earlier in the day get everything up and running and set up and have it all ready to go so hope you guys like the video thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one